JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week January the 18th until January the 22nd. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But uh, before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, this week is likely to be a busy one as there are three central banks on uh, the schedule as well as several important data releases. The banks are the ECB, the Bank of Canada and the Bank of Japan, while on the data front we get Australia's employment report, the UK, New Zealand's and Canadian CPIs, as well as the preliminary PMIs from the Eurozone, the UK and the US. With regards to politics, on Wednesday, Joe Biden will officially become the 46th US president. But uh, now let's take things uh, from the beginning. Today, on Monday, we already got China's GDP for the fourth quarter, as well as the fixed asset investment, industrial production, and retail sales all for the month of December. On a quarter-over-quarter -quarter basis, the GDP slowed to 2.6% from 3%, but this drove the year-over-year -year rate up to 6.5% from 4.9%. Fixed asset investment and industrial production also accelerated on a year-over-year -year basis, while retail sales slowed. The rest of the day appears uh, relatively quiet, with the only release worth mentioning being Canada's housing starts for December, which are expected to have slowed to 225,000 from 246,000. Now, on Tuesday, during the Asian morning, we get New Zealand's uh, ZR Business Confidence Index for the fourth quarter and the nation's uh, electronic card retail sales for December, but no forecast is available for neither release. During the European session, the final German CPI for December, the nation's ZW survey for January, and, G and Eurozone's current account balance for November are due to be released. As it is always the case, the final German CPIs are forecast to confirm their preliminary estimates, while with regards to the ZW survey, the current conditions index is anticipated, is anticipated to have declined to minus 68 from minus 66.5, but the economic sentiment one is expected to have risen to 60 from 55. There is no forecast for Eurozone's current account balance. Now on Wednesday, all eyes will be in the US as uh, Joe Biden will be inaugurated as the 46th US president. Usually such events pass unnoticed by the markets, by the markets but uh, this time it will be interesting to see whether Trump's uh, supporters will proceed with more violent protests as they still refuse to accept uh, that the outcome of the elections was fair and clear. If this is the case, markets may trade in a risk-off fashion, but we stick to our guns that uh, the path of least resistance for risk-linked assets remains to the upside. We repeat that the vaccinations, the U.S. spending package, the monetary policy support around the globe, and the softer stance on global trade by Biden are a cocktail of developments that may keep the broader appetite supporter supported at least in the first months of 2021. Now, apart from Biden's inauguration, we also have a Bank of Canada meeting on Wednesday's agenda. After scaling back its QE purchases in October, the Bank of Canada decided to keep its policy unchanged in December, noting that the rebound in the global and Canadian economies has unfolded largely as the bank anticipated in its October monetary policy report. Officials acknowledge that uh, the positive vaccine news is providing some reassurance, but added that the pace and breadth of uh, the global rollout of vaccinations remains uncertain. Overall, the language was on the neutral side. However, 
with inflation still well below the bank's objective of 2%, and the latest employment report revealing that the Canadian economy has lost 62.6 thousand jobs, we see a decent likelihood for the bank to re-increase its QE purchases at this gathering, something that could hurt the Canadian dollar. That said, we don't expect uh, this to last for long. We still believe that the overall path of this commodity currency will depend on developments surrounding the broader sentiment rather than uh, uh, the monetary policy. As we already noted, we see risk appetite improving in 2021, at least in the first months, something that could uh, prove supportive for oil prices and thereby for the Canadian dollar. For the loony to tumble and stay under selling interest for a while, Bank of Canada policymakers may have to surprise the markets with a rate cut. Nonetheless, we believe that the chances for something like that are minimal, as officials themselves have said that 0.25% uh, of interest rates is the lower effective bound. Now, as for Wesley's data releases, we get the UK CPIs, the final Eurozone CPIs, and the Canadian CPIs all for the month of, uh, of uh, December. In the UK, both the headline and core rates are expected to have risen to 0.5% year-over-year and 1.3% year-over-year from 0.3% and 1.1% respectively. Although this is a move in the desired direction, both rates are still decently below the bank's target of 2%, uh, the Bank of England's uh, target of uh, 2%, and thus the prospect of uh, the bank increasing the pace of its QE purchases at some point soon is not off the table. In any case, this is something the bank already noted that it stands ready to do, thus it will not come as a major surprise if it happens. Overall, with the Brexit saga now taking the back seat and the Bank of England governor playing down the prospect of negative interest rates, the pound has the potential to perform relatively well, at least against the safe havens like the, the, the US dollar and the Japanese yen, which we expect to stay under selling interest due to a supported overall market sentiment. We understand that talks between the EU and the UK are far from over as there is still the issue of the UK's access to the EU's financial world. However, we will start worrying again uh, on that with uh, politics as soon as headlines on that front start entering the spotlight. As for, Euro, for Eurozone CPI prints, they are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. In Canada, the headline, the headline CPI rate is forecast to have hit steady at 1%, while no forecast is available uh, for the core one. In any case, we don't expect Looney traders to pay much attention to the inflation data, as their gaze may be locked on the Bank of Canada and decision due out later in the day. Now, on Thursday, the central bank torch will be passed to the Bank of Japan and the ECB, kicking off with the Bank of Japan when they last met. When it last met, this bank announced uh, no changes to its major monetary policy settings, but expanded its funding support program to firms that was uh, that was introduced uh, earlier this year in response in response to the coronavirus um, to the coronavirus pandemic. The only factor we see as tempting Japanese officials to hit the easing button is the weakening of the US dollar against the Japanese yen. However, the recent rebound in dollar yen may have provided some comfort. With the Bank of Japan's uh, policy already being extremely loose, we believe that policymakers may wait for things to worsen much more before they decide to ease further. In other words, we expect them to stand pat uh, this week. Now, passing the ball to the ECB, at its uh, last meeting for 2020, the bank decided to expand its pandemic emergency purchase program by 500 billion euros and extended the scheme by nine months to March 2022. That said, the euro gained on the decision of more easing as due to the currency's prior appreciation, many may have expected the bank to deliver more. Currently, the Euro USD exchange rate is trading at about the same levels as back then, having even hit much higher levels earlier in January, which is negative for consumer prices. After all, President Lagarde said at the press conference following the last decision that the appreciation of the Euro exercises downward pressure on prices and that they will monitor it very carefully. 
Thus, with negative headline and very low core inflation rates, we see decent chances for the ECB to act again at some point soon. However, we don't expect this to happen at this uh, gathering. Officials have just expanded their stimulative efforts in December, and they may prefer to wait and see the effects of their decision before they decide to act again. If indeed the ECB stands pat, we will dig into the statement for clues as to whether indeed officials are considering more easing, and if so, when uh, it could be served. The euro may slide a bit more if uh, the bank provides clear signals that it's uh, planning to expand its, po its bond purchases in the months to come, while the opposite may be true if we don't get uh, such clues. Now, as for Thursday's economic data, during the Asian session, we get Australia's employment report for December. The unemployment rate is expected uh, to have ticked down to 6.7% from 6.8%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has gained 50,000 50, jobs after uh, adding 90,000 in November. At, at its uh, December meeting, the RBA stood part, repeating that they are prepared to do more if necessary. That said, with the bank noting that the Australian economic recovery is underway and that recent data have generally been better than expected, we don't believe that a slowdown in jobs growth will be the trigger for more easing. A slowdown following the 178.8 thousand and 90 thousand jobs gains in October and November appears more than normal to us. So uh, the report may not be so tempting for RBA, uh, for RBA to expand its stimulative efforts. After all, the unemployment rate is expected to have declined. And as I already said, a slowdown after two months of uh, stellar job, uh, job gains appears more than normal to us. Uh, in any case, Japan's trade balance for December is also coming out during the Asian Morning Thursday, and expectations are for the nation's for the nation's surplus to have increased to 942.8 billion yen, from 368.1 billion yen. Later in the day, the U.S. building permits and housing starts, uh, both for the month of, Defe of uh, December, are coming out. Building permits are forecast to have declined somewhat to 1.604 million from 1.635 million, while housing starts are expected to have increased to 1.560 million from 1.547 million. Now, finally, on Friday, during the Asian trading, New Zealand's uh, CPI is forecast to have accelerated to 0.9% quarter over quarter in the fourth quarter from 0.7%, something that would drive the year over year rate up to 1.7% from 1.4%. Now, back in November, the RBNZ uh, decided to keep its official cash rate and uh, its uh, large-scale asset purchase program unchanged. And although it noted that it will launch a funding for lending program in December, Governor Andrea Nor said that domestic activity since August has been, re has been more resilient than, pre than previously assumed. This, combined with accelerating inflation, is likely to diminish the chance for this bank to adopt negative interest rates in uh, the near future. Japan's CPIs for December are also coming out. Uh, later in the day, we get the preliminary PMIs for January from several European nations, the Eurozone as a whole, the UK and the US. Both Eurozone's manufacturing and services indices are expected to have declined, something that would take the composite index down to 47.9 from 49.1. In the UK, all indices are expected to have hit steady, while in the US, both the manufacturing and services prints are forecast to have slid. The UK and Canadian retail sales for December and, no and November, respectively, are also due to be released. Both the headline and core UK sales are forecast to have rebounded after tumbling in November, while Canada's sales are forecast to have slowed. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and uh, for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next uh, Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around uh, 8.30 a.m. GMT. So goodbye and have a nice day.
JFT, just fair and direct.